Hi everyone, I'm Todd Knock. Welcome to the Art of Todd Knock show here on Facebook. Did I do that right? Art of Todd Knock show here on Facebook. Episode 14. Uh, today I'm drawing Groot on a gray post-it note. Uh, Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy. Groot has a starring role in the Deadpool miniseries I've been hyping this past summer. Uh, Deadpool 2 soon. Issue 1 comes out Wednesday, October 19th, coming up real soon. So make sure you uh, don't miss that miniseries. Pick up issue 1 on October 19th and you'll, you'll be hooked. I, I, I hope. So, I'm so glad y'all could join me and tune in. Well, welcome everyone to, to the broadcast, and if you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching on YouTube. So, let's plug into the rig, let's get drawn, feel free to post your questions, I'll do my best to answer uh, as I draw. So, as always, starting off with my Pentel Twist Erase 0.5 HB lead um, mechanical pencil, and uh, let's start to work in the shapes here. <laughs> Let's see, am I going to be drawing any comics for Marvel or DC coming up? Uh, I'm, I'm uh, drawing Deadpool comics for Marvel. Uh, that's what I'm currently doing. Uh, my, my, my newest Deadpool series debuts this Wednesday, October 19th. Deadpool too soon. You want to make sure you pick that up. So even though uh, Groot's a monster and has a monstrous shape to him, I still rough in a a general head shape, and then build the woody uh, texture parts off of that. So it starts to take on the more monstrous shapes as we go. Big Groot or Baby Groot? This is Big Groot. Big Groot this time. Maybe I'll do a Baby Groot someday. I have drawn Baby Groot before at a comic book convention. At Long Beach Comic Con, for a fan named Wes, he has my currently my only Baby Groot illustration I've done to date. Do I pick the uh, color of post-it note per character? Yes, the character I choose is often the the is often time of uh, affected by the the post-it note color I, I plan to draw on, or the I pick the post-it note color based on the character I plan to draw. So yes, there is a bit of a bit of connection there. Usually to complement the character with the color of paper. Comic or movie? This I'm drawing the uh, comic version of Groot here today. I've been doing drawing a lot of Groot here for Deadpool too soon, so um, definitely doing the comic version. But there's not really t a whole lot of difference between movie and comic version. Some slight variations, but but between the two, it's fairly similar. Thanks for the kind words. So just about got all all the the main shapes in here. A lot of this will be texturized in the ink stage. It's really fun drawing a wooden creature here because of all the different textures. Um, wood texture is a very fun texture to to pencil and ink. Just want to make sure I got the shapes of his face here down the cheeks down to the this an interesting shaped face. So. Uh, Takes a little practice to get it right, um, but it's definitely a fun character to draw. Then some twigs sticking off of his back and the back of his head. Thanks for the kind words, gang. Who, in my opinion, is the most difficult to bring to life? I'm assuming you're referring to which character is most difficult to bring to life. And really, it's uh, 
starting off any character is difficult to bring to life when I'm first learning how to draw them. Like when I first had learned how to draw a rocket and first learned to ha how to draw a group. I had to get used to drawing those shapes. That's why artists do character studies, so that we can get used to how to draw the character. And then from there, it's really just getting the, 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 the correct sh shapes down for the design of the character. So it's really not so much which character is most difficult, it's just every character has their own challenges, but with more with uh, study and practice, I, I start to develop the confidence in knowing how to capture their, their life and personality. So now let's move to the ink stage here with a Micron 08. So I like to recess uh, Groot's eyes way into his head here. So there's a lot of, uh, a lot of black that surrounds it because the eyes set way inside the, the barky uh, texture of his, uh, his face and brow. What's my favorite Marvel movie? I've been getting that question a lot lately. It's a great question. Thanks for asking it. Uh, and uh, my current answer of late has been, uh, I like them all, or I like all the ones that I've seen. Um, I would say Guardians of the Galaxy might be my uh, current favorite. I really did enjoy uh, Civil War, and I'm really looking forward to Doctor Strange coming up real soon. I'm a Sherlock fan, so I really like Benedict Cumberbatch, so I look forward to seeing how he portrays Doctor Strange. What is y'all's favorite Marvel movie? Oh, hello from Paris. Welcome, Paris. Welcome, everyone, from around the world and here in the US. Hope everyone's having a great Saturday morning here on October 15th, 2016. Am I excited for the next Guardians movie? Yes, yes I am, very much so. Is it best to do jagged lines when inking or smooth lines? Well, it depends on the texture that you're inking. So I like to mix it up. I like jagged lines for certain textures. I like smooth lines for other textures. When we're coming to the inks, we are conveying not just the lines and shape, but the textures as well. So, so have a lots of different textures in your inking arsenal. That will bring more life and believability to your the things you're inking it gives it gives the viewer more to look at and to to understand what they're seeing my favorite version of spider-man classic spidey is my favorite i also like black costume spidey Who's y'all's favorite version of Spidey? Did I go to art school and where did I go? Yes, I went to the Art Institute of Dallas. Studied commercial art and graphic design and applied everything I learned there to drawing comics. They did not teach me anything about drawing comics. I had to apply what I was learning there to drawing comics. So, no matter where you go to school, you're going to get out of it what you put into it. So, uh... Definitely am a proponent of getting some sort of schooling somewhere if your time and resources allow. But a lot of my art has come from self-study, self-practice on a regular basis. So even after you've graduated art school, if you have the opportunity to attend art school, you'll still be learning stuff. There's always something new to learn and master. Favorite Spidey villain? I would probably say uh, Venom. But uh, one of my favorites to draw is Sandman. Well, Spidey's got tons of great villains. I also like Green Goblin. I like Doc Ock. Um, I like Electro. I like the Shocker. I like Hydro Man. So as you can see here, I'm putting, uh, with a light source coming from this way, I'm putting heavier shadows in the bark on this side here. So I'm really texturing out the opposite side of his head here. 
these are where to help convey shadow. So you really get some shadows in those nooks and crannies of the bark there. And then the lines start to break up to lighter as we move away. Or move towards the, the more light lit area, I should say. So keeping in mind the striations of a human neck, I utilize the same principles with a tree monster neck, but just use very um, textured lines, again, to convey that bark-like feeling. But we want those striations of, of wood textures coming in here to help. Give him volume, make him look monstrous. Putting twigs off the back of his neck and shoulders here. Do I have any recommended reading for composition, basics, and design? Uh, no, I don't have any recommended reading. Uh, I learned, I studied at the Art Institute, and um, and a lot of that was pretty much all hands-on training for me uh, back then. So whatever literature uh, they had us utilize at the time, I have long since uh, forgotten what those books might have been. That was quite a while back for me for my art school days. So I don't have any books I can recommend. Why the zero eight micron? I just it's just I just prefer the uh, the the line that it gives. Just a personal preference. Your preferences may vary. I just feel it gives a nice, solid line. Now I'll move to thinner sized Copics if went for teeny or tinier detail when necessary, especially if I'm working on a human's face. Uh, I utilize the 01 and the 005 pretty frequently. But with a character like Groot here, I got a lot of thick areas of black, so the... Um, the uh, zero 08 works well for my desired effect that I'm looking to achieve. Tips for breaking into the comic book industry. Uh, draw every day, or as frequently as possible at the very least. Um, let's see. Start drawing... Uh, panel to panel comic book pages. Learn how to tell stories visual, visually. Visually, but I become Amanda sings all of a sudden. Uh, visually, uh, you can check out the books How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, the uh, Wizard Magazine series of How to Draw Comic Books. I have a tutorial in there on creating uh, teenage sidekick characters in volume two or three, um, or just about any How to Draw Comic Book. Comic Books book will give you the basics of uh, what it takes to learn to, to, to tell stories visually and to draw comics. But uh, oh, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way was the book I used. And um, so, and then just a lot of trial and error, a lot of practice. Just, it's like, as I've said in other videos, it's like learning a, a new language on how to communicate visually. It's not going to be easy and... But the more you do it, the more practice you get, the, the, the more you can uh, progress your goals uh, as you go. All right, so I think we got the line work down here. I want to make sure all these lines are dry before I go in a race. Why, is, why are blank cover drawing better than drawing on normal paper? Um, I don't know. I don't know that I agree that... Uh, uh, that blank cover drawing is better than drawing on normal paper. Um, depends on your normal paper, I would guess. Uh, I, I draw on, on uh, 
on printer paper for loose sketches. I draw on Bristol board for my comic book art. And I like drawing on the comic book covers because they are of a Bristol board texture as well. So I guess it really all depends on the type or brands of regular paper a uh, person might be using. But um, I haven't heard anyone uh, it being common, a common practice that drawing on sketch covers are better than drawing on normal paper. But I do wish you all the best with your art on whichever paper you choose to draw on. <laughs> So what am I trying to tell you? That you can dodge bullets? Um, if you're in the Matrix, yes. In real life, don't don't put yourself in that situation. That's just that's just not a good idea. All right, so we got the uh, the inks or the erasing done. So let's move into the browns. I'm going to be utilizing a lot of different browns here and some gray tones for for Groot. So uh, let's start with the E25. And with the sketched uh, brush tip here of the Copic sketch markers, I can, depending on how much pressure I, I put down, I can get a thick line and less pressure, thin line. So just a series of of uh, making the brush tip kind of dance across the page there, I can uh, get the different different textures. So I want to texture out the color as I go as well. What if you're from the UK? Is it hard to break into Marvel at D or DC? Um, you know, I have a lot of friends internationally who work for Marvel in DC. Uh, Rob, or Will Robson, I should say. R Will Robson of Great Lake Avengers. He's from the UK. Um, Mike McCone, originally from the UK. Uh, Andy Lanning, uh, who was a co-writer for Guardians of the Galaxy, along with Dan Abnett. They were both, they are both from the UK. They're the ones that cr created the current team of Guardians of the Galaxy that we all know and love. So uh, lots of people from the UK. I also have friends from Italy, like uh, Gius Giuseppe Camancoli or Emanuela Lupacchino. Uh, they're from Italy. Uh, let's see, Rod Reese, I uh, Ivan Reese, Joe Prado, they are from Brazil. Marcio Tocato is from Brazil. Daniel HDR is from Brazil. Carlo Berberi and uh, Umberto Ramos, Paco Medina, they're from Mexico. So you can live anywhere in the world, really. And, and, uh, and work for Marvel in DC. So let's see, let's move to some E15. That was E25, and I'm gonna change up the color family and go to some E E15. Um, let's kick it to E13. Would I draw He-Man or Skeletor on my next live session? Uh, I don't know if I'll be drawing them on my next live session, but they're definitely characters I would consider to draw in a future live session. Never know what my next character is going to be until the day of the broadcast. Sometimes I even surprise myself. Let's see. But thank you for the suggestion. Thank you for everyone's suggestions. I get a lot of character suggestions. I do appreciate it. I do uh, take note of them. Uh, I just can't promise if or when I'll draw certain characters, but I definitely appreciate it everyone's suggestions and comments, for sure. So a little E31 here, a lighter shade of brown. Oh, you gotta go, you wish you could finish watching? Come back and watch the replay. It'll still be here on, on Facebook and it will be on my YouTube channel later on. So uh, so even if you have to go, you can still come back and, and see how, the entire broadcast if all goes well with uh, uploading the or saving the video to the page. So it shouldn't be a problem. At least I hope. Hope you have a good day, though. Come back and see me sometime. So now a little E57 here. Darker shade now. Keeping in mind my light source coming from this direction, so I'm putting these heavier shadows here heavier, darker browns over here on this side.
Would I do a Galactus? Uh, possibly. Possibly. No plans to it the, in the Im immediate future, but you never know. Don't really care for drawing Galactus as a convention commission, but I do don't mind drawing him here in the studio. Though he is a very uh, detailed character, it might be a double-sized uh, broadcast to get all of Gal uh, Galactus done in, in one broadcast. All right, so I got my browns in and done. Um, let's work in some gray tones. Got my grayscale markers here. Let's start with a little uh, warm gray, warm gray 5. I'm going to utilize different shades of gray here. So right now I'm going to come in with some warm gray 5. Start to texture out those shadows. Do I remember when I realized this was something I could do for the rest of my life? I remember, yeah, I do remember the day that I decided I wanted to be a comic book artist. I was in high school. I was 15, 14 years old. And um, a friend of mine, I've shared this video on my other, or story on my other uh, videos on my YouTube channel. But uh, I'm going to share it again because it's my origin story, or part of my origin story. Uh, a buddy of mine at, at, uh, in high school, um, JD, he said, uh, you know, you're always drawing and you're always reading comics. Have you ever thought to make your own comic? And that was something that had never occurred to me. So that night when I got home from school, I took some printer paper. I folded it in half. A little cool gray five now. I'm going to switch it over to some cool gray. Um, took some printer paper, folded it in half, and wrote and drew an eight-page comic in one night. And it was so much fun creating this story. It didn't look good and the story was worse, but it was so much fun to make that comic. I knew that night, this is what I want to do for the rest of my life. So I started to study, do self-study and training myself, just trying, just, just, just giving it a go, just making a bunch of mini comics in high school, and then continued that into my college days as well. And uh, that's when I realized, age 14. And haven't, haven't looked back since. All right, so let's see. Now for Groot's eyes here, what we want to do is my white pencil trick. So I'm going to do is put in some yellow first, some, some y, Y19, putting in a darker shade of yellow there to start off with. Let's round that out a little bit with a little orange here. That was some YR16. Now I seem to have misplaced my watercolor pencil. No. Where did I put that? Oh, there it is. It missed. It missed the uh, the cup. Gotta do a quick sharpen here, gang. Just sharpening it up here with my little handheld sharpener. Now, come in here and color over this yellow and orange with the white. Just a little bit like that. Now, uh, oh, I want to do a, f a fade like I like to do, as I am want to do. So let's uh, drop in some, uh, we're going to do a cool gray fade. So I'm going to start with a cool 7, keep it really dark up at the top. I'm going to do odd number fades, so I'm going to kick it to the cool gray 5. As always, pulling from the previous color down into the open area of the board. Now it's time for some cool gray three. And then finishing it off with some cool gray one. Whoa, that's weird. That's the first time that's ever happened. My, look at that. 
looks like it's time for a new tip. This one has totally, uh, I have worn this one out. This is the first time I've ever had a tip break on me. That's how frequently I've been using this. Fortunately, I have some tips here and I can uh, pull this out and I'll place a new tip in there later. That is really strange. That's funny. This is live TP TV, people. As always, I'm working without a net because a net never chooses to come into the studio. She's always taking the day off. So some cool gray zero there. That was really strange. Save that for the blooper reel. All right. What types of materials do I suggest for someone uh, starting the basics of comic making? Uh, pencil and some Bristol board. They have pre-ruled comic book Bristol board. Start to learn how to draw at 11 by 7, 10 by 15 size on 11 by 17 Bristol board. And um, and then just a, at least a pencil. Become a, do a pencil artwork. And, um, and then you can add inks if you want. Comics are colored mostly digitally, so you don't need to buy a bunch of Copic markers if you don't need to. Uh, these are I utilize for other types of illustrations or commission pieces. But uh, most comics are colored digitally. So um, so if you're starting out, just some... That's how I started out, at least. Just some uh, Bristol board and a pencil. Make sure you have a ruler and a T-square triangle. Um, so you can draw buildings straight. So now my Uniball Signo white gel pen here for the uh, outline that I like to do on my colored post-it note illustrations. Just coming around here now. Made it a bit challenging for myself here with the uh, the twigs coming off of his head. A lot of details here to go around, but we'll get through it. it just takes a little patience and paying attention. You got here too late? Ah, uh, never too late. Glad you're here now. And you can always go back and re watch the replay of this broadcast here on my Facebook page. And if you're watching on YouTube, of course, you can watch anytime on YouTube or on Facebook. And you can see the whole thing in its entirety. All right. That wasn't as time-consuming as I feared. Let's put a little uh, highlight here in his eye there. Just really pop that highlight out. Put a little bit of this uh, white pencil <laughs> through the uh, through here. Just kind of give a little more texture, a little little light hitting the bark here. So something just fell off my desk and I have no idea what it was. Again, live TV, people. The set's falling apart. My, mark my markers are falling apart. All right, there we go. Just a little, little extra detail there. So let me grab my Copic, or my Pigma Micron here and add my name to it here. Today is the 15th. And there we go. There's Groot. Groot, there he is. All right, gang. I'm going to flip around here, take a few questions, because I know I missed a lot of questions, and um, and we'll start to wrap up the show. Huh. Got a little, little streak of white there I didn't want. Nice thing about the, the pencil is that you can just wipe it right off. So here we go, let's flip around. My glasses back on. Hey, hey, how's it going, everybody? So let's see, uh, do I need to turn? There we go. So were there any other questions? What scanner do I use? I use an, uh, an Epson scanner. Now the scanner I use is really old, but it's an industrial scanner. A buddy of mine who used to work for an advertising place uh, got it for me. They were throwing out the scanner. He says, hey, can I, can I have that? And he gave it to me. 
It's old. It scans great. I mean, it's one of the, it's a high end scanner, but it's from like 10, 13 years ago. It only runs on my G3 Mac. So, uh, so I can't really advise on what scanners to use because I, I got mine for free and it is seriously outdated, but I can still use it because it scans, still scans super awesome. Uh, do I ever use cardstock for pictures? Uh, sometimes, yes, sometimes I do. Um, thanks for all the kind words, gang. I appreciate that. Do I use the colored Copic fine liners? Uh, yes, yes, sometimes I do. I do. Uh, the multi-liners, different colors, blue, red, brown. Yeah, sometimes I do for different effects, especially if I'm doing a watercolor piece. Uh, I like to use different colored uh, um, multi-liners for, for, for the inking stage and then color over that. It creates a really fun, fun effect. Gang, I want to say thank you so, so much for tuning in. It's always awesome to see y'all. Always fun to hang out. Thanks for joining me for this broadcast. Thanks for watching here on Facebook. And if you're watching on YouTube, thanks for watching on YouTube. Be sure to like my Art of Todd Knock page. Art of Todd Knock page. Easy for me to say. Art of Todd Knock page. Go ahead and just give that a like. And um, uh, make sure you set up the subscription so you, you get the updates in your feed so you don't miss any future broadcasts. And if you're watching on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe so you don't miss out on future uploads as well. Uh, gang, I hope y'all uh, have a great day, and I hope to see y'all again real soon, and be sure to stick around. I'll be posting the uh, photo of this image on my all my social media, um, so be sure you follow me at Todd Knock, Twitter, Instagram, all those places, um, so that you don't miss any art. Uh, thanks again, gang, and I'll see y'all again real soon. All the best. Bye-bye.